must have a code that you can live by. We use a core knowledge curriculum from kindergarten through the eighth grade, and then we have written our own curriculum from high school for high school um, along the same core knowledge model. We really like that they that the core knowledge curriculum teaches sequentially through time. We do that in high school as well, and we do it with a classical approach. We read the classics whenever possible. We believe that it's very important to hire um, intellectual teachers, not necessarily certified teachers, and then we also need students who want to learn. Now we know that all students don't want to learn, so it is our job to make them want to learn. It is our job to get them excited about the curriculum and engaged in what they are learning so that they can participate in their co the conversation in the classroom and be more attentive and, and um, do better in school. Your children well, their father's hell did slowly go by. We go far beyond what is normally expected of students in terms of memorizing dates, grammar, uh, and this sort of thing, and really try to develop through dialogue and conversation, uh, critical thinking skills, and the ability to analyze arguments and to to encounter their world with a degree of skepticism that perhaps isn't instilled in them to a great degree in other educational programs. What we have seen with this as these students leave is that they take these same schools not only to the colleges that they attend, but also into their jobs and into their personal lives. So these are not things that are time limited or that are specific to uh, one's juvenile years, but are uh, skills carried into their adult lives. Probably one of the things I'm most proud of are, are the kids that had to struggle, right? Um, a lot of rumors out there saying that we're a, kid, a school for smart kids. And we like to think that they don't come in smart, we make them that way. The successes that we've had with kids that struggle with learning disabilities or struggle with reading or had had previous gaps in their education, the amount of improvement we can see um, over a course of a year or maybe two with these kids is um, very satisfying. The instructor is largely left to their own devices to find materials and provide these for students. This has meant over time uh, a very sort of concerted effort to collect materials, uh, primary source materials primarily, uh, for students to use and review and discuss and have conversations with. Uh, and this is something we don't see typically in other schools. What we see is a very sort of fixed routine where a teacher year after year either is using an AP prep book or they're using a standardized textbook. Uh, liberating the teacher means that and the sort of entrepreneurial nature that goes along with that means the teacher absolutely must know their material and they must continually relearn and expand their knowledge which makes them a, a competitive force in a market and education is a market very much like others. From the day we started the school it was always to do the best we could in this building but to help raise the level for education across America and that's really what needs to be happening and finally after the, you know the eight years of getting the school started we are being able to help other schools and that I think we can make a real difference in the country because because um, education is obviously failing in America. The philosopher Michael Oakeshott talks about one of the things that we take away isn't so much the skill that we learned in a class as the residual knowledge, meaning the skills that were necessary to acquire that knowledge. And I think that what Ridgeview does particularly well is it provides a sort of critique or skepticism uh, in its students that they carry on to all the other aspects of their lives. So it may not be simply that they remember how the Electoral College works, but they know why the Electoral College was designed, how it works, and they apply this same method of questioning to other events in their lives. If you're just a parent trying to help your own children, I would say teach them how to read very well. It's got to be explicit phonics and make them love learning. And with that, we can, you know, any, the child can thrive with those two things. Don't you ever ask them why If they told you you would cry So just look at them